नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस सेशन वी हैव कमेंस दैट मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट सूत्र ऑफ द टेक्स्ट विच इज ऑन अष्टांग योग अनुष्ठान एंड अष्टांग योग वी आर स्थिल गोइंग थ्रू द प्रोलॉग to the sutra it is so important to have this prologue because ashtanga yoga anushthan is said to be working in two ways ashuddhi kshaya that is klesha kshaya and gnana deepti that is bestowing viveka khyati and as i said yesterday even if it is not anushthanam if it is taking place on other planes which are undoubtedly lower planes than anushthanam ashtang yoga would be working that way but in the light of yoga that we have today in the light of yoga that is taught today any stretch of imagination will not give us slightest clue that it works on the yoga that we are taught the yoga that we practice today works for these two purposes which the text has mentioned namely ashuddhi kshaya and gnana deepti and therefore the prologue is getting extended with today's session because we need to understand as to how there is a relationship between the ashtanga sadhana ashtanga abhyasa artaka sadhana ashtanga practices with uh, such fortifications because as i said today's yoga that we are taught and today's yoga that we hear about can in no way uh, tell us that such things can happen because today's yoga is for our fitness physical and mental at the most we can say that our yoga will give us some kind of betterment in our physical health and mental health psychological health so maybe that's all we can expect from the yoga today and the pro- propagation of yoga in our times is also stressing on these two factors that yoga will give you what you cherish in life that is wellness and well-being physically and mentally and therefore no stretch of imagination will be able to convince us with what the classical text is saying and therefore we will have to look into it and of course all the classical texts have unanimously said about this what patanjali is saying is not only view of patanjali but all the classical texts of yoga tell us about the outcome of yoga yoga sadhana yoga practices and therefore today we are trying to consider this dimension as to how it may work so from the sutra where we are told that it has two kinds of heads to operate one is for ashuddhi kshaya and the other one is for gnana deepti hi at the outset let me tell you here that both ashuddhi kshaya and gnana deepti hi these two are significantly attained by wisdom process when i refer to wisdom it's not temporal wisdom wisdom of the brain the wisdom in 
spiritual sense the gnana we know what is gnana and viveka khyati is gnana and we can uh, understand that gnana is means of liberation or kaivalya and those are little familiar with indian philosophies are aware of the statement gnanat eva to kaivalyam it is gnanam adhyatma gnanam paramartha gnanam uchcha gnanam para gnanam param gnanam that is means of human spiritual samam bodham so viveka khyati is obviously gnana but it must be understood here that even gnana in the sense adhyatma portrays also works for ashuddhikshaya uh, so gnana itself is two edged measure gnana would be giving gnana and this can be easily understood but gnana also obliterates malice dirt in the psyche consciousness uh and we know that the purificatory processes are needed to wipe out impurities now there is quite a plain logic here that impurities are countered by a purificatory process cleansing process purificatory processes and interestingly bhagavad gita has uh something to tell us here that which says gnanam is the greatest of sanctifiers gnana is greatest purifier gnana is greatest sanctifier nahi gnanena sadrusham pavitram ih vidyate gnana is pavi- pavitra auspicious and auspiciousness definitely blows away impurities you can't say that you have auspiciousness in your mind or you have auspicious conditions but yet the malice is on the surface or malice is playing havoc so auspiciousness definitely counters a uh, malice dirt in for imperfections in the mind psyche consciousness so the gnanam being pavitryam it also works for ashuddhikshaya now one can easily relate how ashuddhikshaya would take take place with pavitryam and particularly the chitta mala the ashuddhi of the chitta would certainly be countered by pavitryam mangalyam and the gnana is said to be supremely pavitra and mangala supremely sanct and supremely purifying is the gnana and that's why that verse in bhagavad gita nahi gnanena sadrusham pavitram ih vidyate nothing is as pavitra as auspicious as gnana of course this gnana is not knowledge that we understand in the worldly realm temporal uh knowledge that's not the purificatory aspect knowledge only gives knowledge so by knowledge you only have a condition that you know better so knowledge gives you that condition you start becoming a better knower and better and better knower and better and better and better knower but that is about the worldly knowledge it only makes your knowledge able 
but adhyatmic knowledge which is the true knowledge essential knowledge only knowledge in the language of bhagavad of bhagavad gita and that is adhyatmak gnanam the gnanam is adhyatmak gnanam and adhyatmak gnanam is that gnana which is referred to here that it purifies your mind psyche consciousness it purifies your chitta when the chitta is pure it is the best receiver of adhyatmak gnanam so all the we think that these are two heads with which ashtanga yoga works here we can understand it is only one head with one head ashtanga yoga works and the one head itself works in two ways for ashuddhikshaya as well as gnana tipti hi that is also a point to be understood otherwise uh physical cleanliness doesn't come by uh what do you call that which is a sanctifying process or it doesn't come in a by any other means than by other than cleansers so we only understand cleanse cleanser cleanse cleanliness cleansing in physical realm so there is no need of knowledge working there your knowledge will not the worldly knowledge will not give you purification the uh, worldly knowledge will only give you knowledge but adhyatma gnana is unique so as that verse in bhagavad gita tells us in 13th chapter adhyatma gnana nityatvam tatva gnana artha darshanam एतज्ञानमी प्रोक्त अज्ञान यदो अथा सो एक्चुअली वी आर ऑल पर्स्यूइंग अज्ञान इन अवर वर्ल्डली प्रोसेस ऑफ गेनिंग नॉलेज अवर एकेडमिकल नॉलेज इज नथिंग बट अमासिंग अज्ञान इन ट्रू सेंस ऑफ द टर्म ऑल द वी बिकम नॉलेजबल बाय एकेडमिक पर्स्यूट we are amassing agnyanam essentially but the, because that is agnyanam yadado anyatha rest all is agnyanam it might be knowledge but not gnyanam and therefore we need to not mess up between the sanskrit term and english term the gnyanam is gnyanam and knowledge is knowledge so maybe it can be said that knowledge that we call as knowledge today is vigyanam it is vigyanam good in the worldly realm in mundanity this knowledge plays lots pays lots of dividends if you are knowledgeable person that will play a lot of dividends in mundane world so uh in that sense it is the wealth knowledge becomes wealth in the mundane world uh but gnana is a different thing and not therefore not to mess up between gnana and knowledge the point is ashtang yoga it is not that there are sets of practices that ashtanga in particular way will work for ashuddhikshaya and ashtanga in another way will work for gnana deepti so it should not be mis- misconstrued that way ashtang yoga doesn't have uh, double practices that one is to gain the ashuddhikshaya or attain the ashuddhikshaya or uh, the other one is to attain the gnanam it doesn't work that way it is one and the same sadhana so that means uh, ashtang yoga is basically wisdom process in the in the sense adhyatmik gnana process so here we should understand the term wisdom as although it might be used very often 
that it it refers to subjective knowledge inner knowledge subjectivistic knowledge knowledge about one self and that knowledge about one self works in both the ways one is to mitigate impurities and overcome dirts of the mind dirts of the psyche consciousness the other one is to the other one in the sense that itself results into the consciousness becoming good receiver of knowledge so gnana comes in pure mind knowledge doesn't need pure mind our worldly knowledge doesn't need need pure mind it needs intelligent mind but adhyatma gnana for that gnana one needs pure mind you can't have all kinds of dirts in your mind and yet try to acquire gnanam so that is another thing that we have to understand so the ashtanga yoga sadhana or yoga sadhana has unique dimensions because of which we can be getting these unexpected results and fruits which we cannot imagine uh by any stretch of imagination we will not be able to get it so we have to understand certain fundamental things here about ashtanga yoga sadhana it can be anything from ahimsa satya asteya to shaucha santosha tapasvadhyay to asana pranayam pratyardhana dhyan samadhi anything basically it is an internal activity yoga takes place in the internal realm the all other activities take place in external realm we go out and do our work so that's how is the expression that if you have to be working you have to go out and do the work while in adhyatma and in yoga you have to go in and work so understand what is meant by the word in i n and out o u t so yoga is internal activity internalizing activity it is something that is done within and not something done without so here we can distinguish the mundane activities take place outside even if the mundane activity is taking place internally it is with regards to external yes mundane activity can take place mentally the mind will be thinking about men the mundane aspects but the subject matter of the mundanity is external so either the factor or aspect or content of subject uh, the subject matter in mundane realm is external or the very process and instrumentation and dynamics are external and that's why we have to go out and do our work so that is what is called laukika karma while in yoga we have to turn inwards and go internally and do something internally be that ahimsa to samadhi one has to go internally and do something internally that's how it stands out uh distinctly from mundane activity we don't have to depend upon any instrument external nor the object is external nor the subjective entity has to project externally so subject subjective entity has to project internally the instruments are also internal to us they are within us and the object of uh attainment is also internal to us 
so object of knowledge subject of knowledge instrument of knowledge it's all internal that is signature condition of adhyatma so yoga is adhyatmic sadhana while if you take any worldly activity there will be invariably an extraneous factor so sometimes it can be just one factor sometimes both the factors or all the three factors at least very very significantly and substantially all the three factors are external in loukic all the you might have your thought process which is internal it is not ruled out that there is no internal uh thought process or internal instrument you will be thinking even for mundane goals and worldly goals to be attaining something mundane to be attaining something worldly you will be having internal thought process no doubt about it but you will see that there are so many extraneous factors the goal itself is outside you the goal the target the destination itself is outside you so also you will be taking recourse to so many instruments and gadgets which are external to you like usually in our earlier generations people thought if it's a act of intellect one has to work with one one's own intelligence so one had to depend upon one's own subjective inter- intelligence to be doing an intelligent activity or acting needed needing intelligence but in our times that is not the case we can be using a computer and do the intellectual work with the help of computer it will do all computing needed and the intellect uh, artificial intellect would be working so we depend upon extraneous instrument like any intellectual act we depend upon computer uh, this was not the case in our earlier generations if somebody had to be intelligent somebody had to be exclusively and only intelligent in the brain now today the brain intelligence will be there the natural intelligence will be there but it will be assisted by artificial intelligence in a big way very big way so this cannot be denied today that we work with both um uh, ai and ni ai is artificial intelligence and ni is natural intelligence so the instrument even for intellectual act has become something external to us and it has become so important so vital so indispensable that today no intellectual work will take place without a computer that's how it has come today that's where it has come today so there will be extraneous factors as i said the goal is outside the instrument is extraneous to you in a big way and quite vitally it is extraneous vital instrument is so extraneous whereas in adhyatma there is no extraneous factor external factor that is signature condition of adhyatma and the whole of yoga is doing something within and doing something for within and doing something by within so understand this particular statement here and when something is done within here the instrument is internal to us now the marvel of yoga that instrument is internal to us it must be understood that yoga is by associated body mind and breath 
the yoga is by associated body mind and breath if you open out the factor it is associated body mind breath senses body organs mind organs psyche consciousness associated condition is a marvelous compound and that is the instrument in yoga that is also the object to be attended to in yoga so in yogic process coming to this is classical aspect this of uh in that aspect of classical yoga that in yoga we use our own body mind and breath senses etc so they are all ours inherently ours intrinsically ours and we use them so they become instruments and we also work on them we again work on those our aspects our body mind breath senses organs etc so we work by all those ours aspects we work on all those which are our aspects and one who works he is also compositely of ours so this is signature condition of yoga needs to be understood it is very difficult to put in words that yoga is not done by you yoga is actually not done for you even in the formative phases it is not done by you it is not done for you it is not done through you primarily yoga is done for all your things so what is addressed in yoga is associated body and not body what is addressed in yoga is associated breath and not the breath and what is addressed in yoga is not mind but associated mind so if the yoga has to be done on all these ours aspect in needed conditions associated conditions integrated conditions unified conditions in yoga we don't work on our our body our mind our breath as it is construed by a layman we don't work on our body our breath our mind we work on our associated body our associated breath our associated mind so that is the benefact beneficiary aspect in dynamics of yoga the instruments are also as i said they are intrinsic inherent to us we do yoga through associated body mind breath or associated body mind breath senses organ psyche consciousness so those are the instruments and the doer is also associated so if we look at yoga as as to what is really done if we think yoga is doing then we should know what is done and who is doing it so if yoga is doing then there is a doer and there is a done so when there is a doer and when there is a doing and where there is done in yoga they are all intrinsically ours and therefore when it comes to doing of yoga basically we have to get these aspects together body mind breath they should be in associated conditions 
and then they are also such that they can get needed all matters don't get needed but body mind breath matters are such that can get needed when i say needed k n e a d need so these matters are such that they can get needed all the chemically we see that the body is of one matter mind is of another matter breath is of yet another matter internally these matters are all needable that they be- can become unified one even so that's why yoga has that definition unified condition is 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 yoga so they can be needed they can be unified integration is yoga so they can get integrated and the doer is such a needed entity and the instrument through which or with the help of which any doing is taking place then that is also needed entity the same needed entity and whatever is done as a beneficiary whatever is done that done is also the same associated needed matter unified matter so that is unique aspect of adhyatma the two are doing done are all associated aspects of our embodiment gross to subtle identified to all identified identifiable to all identifiable so the internal activities with internal purpose for internal purpose in adhyatma would take place by all these things coming together and that is also connotation of yoga to come together to bring together is also connotation of yoga so see the connotation of yoga appearing in very preparatory stage where we try to get these aspects come together get needed together starting from getting associated getting related and then getting needed and getting unified getting integrated and getting unified so all these are connotations of yoga associate condition of body mind breath is yoga mutually related condition of body mind breath is yoga mutually connected condition of body mind breath is yoga mutually integrated condition of body mind breath is yoga and mutually needed condition of body mind breath is yoga and mutually unified condition of body mind breath is yoga and that is why this is yoga because this is the basic preparatory now this instrument with which yoga is done because otherwise we have the classification in our worldly realm that something is physical and our something is mental and our so we know there are certain activities which are physical activities and if they are not physical activities they are mental activities the mental activities can be of intelligence of emotion or of mind so mental intellectual emotional activities are bracketed as mental activities and we only identify two kinds of activities that's either something is physical or something is mental whereas yoga has unique uh, material 
which is associated condition of body mind and breath so they come together and they have such characteristics of dharma that they can come together if it is internal purpose so they have such an affiliation with each other they have such a relationship with each other that they can really come together to the extent that they can get unified so they have such a relationship internally externally we don't really understand this relationship in perspective have you ever put a question what's the relationship between body and mind like you have relationships that somebody as parents or somebody as offspring so parent and offspring relationship brother and brother relationship sister and sister relationship brother and sister relationship so we know these various relationships which we have in the world uh and it extends to friends to friends and companions etc etc we have those relationships somebody is your friend it's a relationship as somebody is your brother and somebody is your sister and somebody is your father and somebody is mother the friendship is also relationship so we are only aware of these relationships how we have relationships but we do not understand the relationship of ours all that is ours so you understand your relationship that you are somebody's brother somebody's father somebody's son somebody's daughter somebody's wife somebody's husband somebody's friend so that is you understand your relationship with the world around you but you don't try to understand the relationship of yours with yours so in yoga we are introduced to these unique relationships like we have all these things which are ours or they are all these things which are yours like your body your mind your breath your senses your organs your psyche your consciousness so you know your relationship with your body your relationship with your mind your relationship with your breath etc but you don't try to understand your relationship mutually between each other and they are all mutually related and we have never got introduced to their mutual relationships as to how our body and our mind are related our body our breath are related our breath and our mind are related mutual relationships are not understood and of course your activity depends upon relationships what you do depends upon your relationship for whom you are doing it with whom you are doing it for with the help of whom you are doing it for whom you are doing it so it depends upon relationship your activities depends upon relationship if you like a person a lot you will try to do something that is the best for that person and that for you but if the person is disliked for you you don't something that is best for that person so your activity will be different depends upon whether that person is your alien or ally friend or foe liked or hated so your activity depends upon how is your relationship with it so your activity depends upon how is your relationship with the instrument how is your relationship with the object and we never bother about interrelationships or intra relationships between between which are all ours the body is ours the mind is ours the breath is ours the senses are ours the consciousness is ours the psyche is ours so these are all ours 
that means between themselves they are brothers and sisters of each other or cousins of each other so they have always a relationship if you have a brother and you have a sister it's not only that you have a relationship with the two that one is brother the other is sister but they mutually have the relationships they are also mutually brother and sister of each other therefore they happen to be your brother and your sister so there is a mutual relationship and what you do how you do would depend upon relationship and therefore it is important to understand this relationship between body mind breath senses psyche consciousness etc then what is done would be understood how something is done would be understood why something is done would be understood so in yoga we are introduced it's not just you must do your yoga holistically bring in all those aspects and they should all participate they must mutually interact they must mutually inter respond and not that it's just an orchestration that everything is doing in your yoga body is doing mind is doing breath is doing senses are doing psyche consciousness are doing it's not that all have to participate but all of them must interact interface have interface have interplays and have inter responses so these are unique dynamics of yoga and therefore this kind of yoga would work for both it would purify the mind psyche consciousness purify the body mind psyche consciousness and it would also go give wisdom so when they interact there are sparks of wisdom like if two wise people wise people in a worldly sense whom we call as wise that is a wise person that's a wise person if two wise persons are interacting or dialoguing discussing we will be able to get lot of wisdom substance by two wise people interacting or having interface the wise people having interface is of great advantage to we people around them they are talking they are discussing they are debating lot of advantage is there for we people who are around them so therefore when two wise people are around we don't want to talk we want to hear and when we hear we get a lot of wisdom by their interactions so similarly when these associated body mind breath are interacting the wisdom sparkles in their interactions so there are sparks of wisdom coming when associated body mind breath senses are interacting having interplay having interface mutually interacting and mutually inter responding so like two stones when you strike against each other you get spark similarly here when these associated conditions come into interactions there are lots of sparks of wisdom of the nature of gnana precisely adhyatma gnana essential wisdom true wisdom so there is wisdom process and also there will be purificatory process they will purify each other when soap water touches your hand part then the soap will clean that part so similarly when the associated body mind breath interact they also purify each other the body matter is purified breath matter is purified mind matter is purified so they are mutually purifying each other so their interaction means they also purify each other 
not only that they give you wisdom but they purify each other this is the marvel of associated conditions of yoga where we get the first component of yoga that body mind breath have associated condition needed condition unified condition integrated condition like salt dissolves in water body mind breath would dissolve in each other and that would turn out that unified matter with which yoga is done on which yoga is done for which yoga is done in the formative phases that is working on chitta because the whole put together is chitta or mind stuff chitta is not just the mind the chitta is the whole thing and complete thing so that's how uh the very process or technology of yoga is such that it works for purificatory act of entire matter of embodiment physical to psychic consciousness and also the wisdom process so this is the unique thing when these things come together to work in the internal realm for internal purpose then there is wisdom process and purificatory process both which ashtang yoga in its very opening statement promises or mentions that it works in two ways so it is this is how that yoga works ashtang yoga of any hierarchy on any plane from raw to rudimentary plane to very ripe plane would work in this way so that was another aspect of enunciation that i wanted to put across which i have done today the moot points here is that the your things all which are yours within you inherently yours innately yours integrally yours they come and interact they come and have inter responses that is how the yoga takes place and what is turned out out of those is yama niyama ahimsa adi yamas shaushaucadi niyamas asana pranayam pratyahar etc all those ashtanga aspects would really be turning out from all these things coming together for interaction interplay interface inter responses so something we have to understand about dynamics of yoga primarily basically and that is what i have done today so with that let us end the session today and proceed on this ashtanga yoga in our next session namaskar all of you